we are still talking about jim crow law if you have not seen this particular video please click and go watch it now there we talked about jim crow the resurrection of jim crow and what is happening in mississippi in this particular video today we're going to talk more on jim crow law like how we all started from the beginning so i'm going to put videos and stitches for us to watch in light of mississippi passing the new jim crow laws i wanted to address two things one what the previously adopted jim crow did um and two what these new laws mean for the city for the citizens of jackson mississippi because that's who it affects hey, so previously we talked about the emancipation proclamation of 1863 and the 13th amendment of 1865 or 1868 i'm sorry so let's jump ahead to 1870 the 15th amendment the 15th Amendment protected the voting rights of particularly black men after the Civil War. Remember, women still can't vote um, by saying you can't deny someone the right to vote based on their skin color. OK, so jumping ahead a little further to the late 1870s, the Southern Republican Party is completely gone. So the southern states nullify the 15th Amendment and the 14th Amendment, also known as the natural born citizen law, because this also includes all the children that were forcibly born to slaves in in and on plantations and used as forced labor. So they can't have that. It also says that states can't um, diminish your privileges without due process. Um, so after this, states reestablish what's called a polling tax, otherwise known as a voting fee, um, which most black people could not pay. Um, literacy tests, because most slaves could not read or write, permitting only white people to vote in primary elections. They intimidated black people. There was violence. Um, and overall, it succeeded in eliminating or diminishing the black vote. Now, by the late 1870s, more than half a million black men had registered to vote. Now, that's fantastic. But Mississippi had a problem with it. Mississippi comes up and goes, no, 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 no. So they come up with Jim Crow. So Jim Crow introduces segregation. It also restricts voting, education, employment, and housing um, for people of color. That stays in place until both the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965, both of which say you cannot discriminate on the basis of somebody's skin color. So what do the Southern states do? They refer back to the 13th Amendment because a felon's rights to voting, education, employment, and housing are automatically restricted. Further, once you have a felony on your record, you are no longer eligible to vote. And who's incarcerated at a rate five times higher than their white counterparts? Say it with me. Black men. It's a perfect combination for them. But that combined with racial profiling, the racial wage gap, the failing school systems in mostly BIPOC areas, and continued unchecked police brutality, it all culminates into the fact that Jim Crow not only never left, but it continues to thrive to this day, which is why critical race theory is so dang important. Like for part two. I like this planet to stop moving so that I could please get the fuck off. In some super scary, I can't believe I'm living during this time news, Mississippi has resurrected the Jim Crow law and have even made their own judiciary system for the black community, which is a hundred times different and worse for the black community. Ugh, we live in 2023. Segregation, lynching, all of that is on the table. Women are starting to lose all of our rights. I've lost rights to my own body. The LGBTQ community is absolutely on fire and we need to protect them right now. This is no longer the land of the free. I, I, I seriously, I don't get it. And you know what the best part is? All of this shit is being proposed by white, old ass men. Oh! I'm in a philosophy of race course this semester, and the entire course is basically talking about race and how it is like such a hard thing to talk about somatic wise and we're looking at like all these other like philosophers and people who like wrote these great works on what race is and what race is to them and like the different ways that people can see race and ultimately we're kind of coming to the conclusion that race is not real race is a social thing that's made up by people by social interactions and with that in mind i'm having a really really hard time wrapping my mind around what's going on in Mississippi right now. Um, they are reinstating some Jim Crow-like laws. If you don't know what's going on, I highly recommend you to just look it up really quick. Um, I'm sure it could tell you a lot more than what I could tell you. But it's, it's a really 
really sad day when this is what's happening in our world. This is what we're allowing to happen in our world. I really don't understand it. So a lot of people are asking exactly what is it that I saw? What truth did I see that made me change my perspective on our criminal justice system? And this is how it goes. So a person of color in the United States during the Jim Crow era faced disenfranchisement, second class citizenship, barriers to voting, barriers to education, barriers to employment, and barriers to housing. Then in the United States, we passed the 1964 Civil Rights Act, the 1965 Voting Rights Act, that said that we can no longer do this, discriminate based on skin color. 21, what is the only label that we can legally discriminate against, that we can legally disenfranchise, relegate to second class citizenship, have barriers to voting, barriers to education, barriers to employment, barriers to housing. If you guessed right, in 2021, convicted felons are the only people we are allowed to legally disenfranchise. Now, do you believe it's a coincidence that one in three African American males now carry this label of convicted felon as opposed to one in 17 white males that carry this label of convicted felon to legally be disenfranchised? If you answered yes to that question, let's look at what's happened between the Jim Crow era in 2021. We've had a 700% increase in our United States prison population. We've gone from 300,000 inmates in 1970 to 1.8 million today and as high as 2.3 million. So in spite of crime rate dropping, our prison population skyrocketed. And it was because we had the law and order agenda. And the law and order agenda increased police spending but decreased our education funding. And by doing so, we created the school to prison pipeline. We also created the war on drugs, which we now know is a war on people. In 1986, we passed the Anti-Drug Abuse Act, which differentiated between powder cocaine and hard cocaine, which we now know disproportionately impacted people of color. We also had the 94 Crime Bill with the Truth and Sentencing Act, which led to higher incarceration rates and harsher sentences for people of color. And once I saw all this, my perspective changed because I know that Jim Crow era never ended. Racism never ended. It just evolved into what we now have as the new Jim Crow, modern day slavery. If this is how they want to treat black people now in Mississippi, we are not going to agree to that because it doesn't just make sense. When you say a particular race is better than another race just because, just because of our skin color why do we have to suffer we don't have to keep quiet we need to talk and know what's up i would like to know your opinion down in the comment section you guys pull down your toilet in the comment section what do you think we need to do about this jim crow law that has been reinstated in mississippi hey guys my name is maria david and i'm a content creator based in lagos nigeria thank you guys so much for watching my channel to this point and don't forget to like subscribe share this video if you find it helpful and i'll see you guys in my next one bye